that a Chardonnay dance? <laughs> Yay, we're having Chardonnay. What is it's like a leprechaun dance or something? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not aware of this, everybody. Welcome to Dancing with Chardonnay <laughs> with your dance instructor, Robbie G. That's me, the professor of dance. I mean, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Oh my gosh, happy um, Wednesday. It is Wino Wednesday. I'm Wino Wednesday. Glass that I'm clinking. <laughs> it's Wino Wednesday with Chardonnay. Haven't even had any yet, and we're just giddy to no end. Can you believe it? Uh, yeah, but uh, today, Rob, I'm Gina, by the way. We know this is Dancing Rob, and I'm drinking Gina. <laughs> and uh, here to welcome you to the, I'm going to call it the yay or nay to Chardonnay edition of Wino Wednesday. Yeah, we noticed that we got to like the, I don't know, 20th or 30th Wino Wednesday before we are trying Chardonnay. <laughs> like the most popular white, perhaps, anywhere? The funny thing is the yeah. most popular wines seem to be the, in our opinion, maybe the, the ones that go the, the least with best. Cheese. With cheese. Because we have not done its count, red counterpart. Cabernet. Correct. Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay are yeah. the two most popular drinking wines in the, in the United States. Yeah, and it's crazy. And we have not done either. This is in the first. Yeah. And they are hard to pair with Jesus. Yeah. You know, so Not I, always the best. Not always the best. But, um, Rob, I'm going to make a confession. I am a nay to California Chardonnay. Okay. So I am doing what my um, tattoo says, and I'm going to fear less. <laughs> and I'm going to not fear the buttery Chardonnay, but embrace the buttery Chardonnay today with the cheeses that we have for you. So everyone that is Jason, I see you, good evening Jason, and everyone hey, who knows how this works, uh, if you have a YouTube account, you can join in the live chat and we'll try to answer the questions as we go. If you don't, we hope to answer your questions anyways, and uh, you can just follow along eating and drinking. Um, yeah. That's um. We'll, we'll give them a, a, We're gonna give you guys a rundown of the cheese. Of course, we'll walk through each one one by one. But we want to tell you what it is first, and eat, drink at your own leisure. Do whatever you want. But we will tell you about everything. <laughs> exactly. Um. So for the cheeses, we have a little order here that we will be going in. And uh, the first one is called the Tomo Provence, and it's this cheese that has the little bits in it. It's got herbs, kind of like a medium texture, triangle shape. Um, that's the Tomo Provence. Tomo Provence. Provence. The <laughs> second one uh, is uh, actually from France. That, the first one just has a French name. This is the Tome de Savoie. It's got a really crusty natural rind on it, but that's the Tome de Savoie. The third one is called Gumen. And it's this one. It's a kind of a longer triangle. It's a little bit um, drier. It's got kind of like white flecks in it, and it's got. Um, the the rind looks like a dinosaur <laughs> shell or something. <laughs> like, I was going to say cave wall, but dinosaur shell works. <laughs> Do dinosaurs have shells or just really rough lizardy skin? I don't know. I never met one. Sharp uh, Max is the fourth cheese, and that is a smoother, kind of triangular one. This one's really a pungent, so you might want to give it a smell to make sure it's the right one. It's really like mushroomy and earthy. And it's wibbly. Did you yeah, see that? and it's wibbly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do that with pencils? And mm, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah! And then this really crusty one that is chunked out in these pieces, this is the flagship reserve cheddar. Okay, so that'll be the last one we talk yes. about. Yes, and these little accoutrements, if oh, I may. Yes. yes. We have um, these little ditties, which have become a crowd <laughs> favorite. They are dried pears. Super, super good. Pears, always a good idea with cheese. Of course, we all know the Spanish Marcona almond, fried and salted, mm. ultra delicious. What, what pairs with pears? What pairs with pears? Oh. Mm. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> then we have our jam of the day. Always good idea to put jam with cheese because then you get the sweet with the salt. Yeah. This one, oh my gosh, you guys love. It's a blackberry walnut. Uh, it's from Jam, San Francisco, the Bay Area. We love this jam. Jam I Am, I think it's the company. No, I think it might be called We Love Jam. We Love Jam. It might be that. <laughs> we Love Jam Jam. Sounds right. And um, when you taste it, you will love it too. And then you can counter that with a fresh blackberry that should be on your plate. Then we have these little beautiful things. The Peppa Goat Bites is what we call them. They are um, South African Peppa Dew peppers that we stuffed with an herb goat cheese. And they're very important to be on the plate today because we're going to talk about these buttery Chardonnays. And 
herby cheeses, and this is an herby cheese that we think goes perfectly well with the Chardonnay. And then I'm missing a little flower, and yes, it's edible. We put them on not just for beauty, but for um, flavor as well. You can definitely eat it. You can be like a Swiss brown cow and eat the flower. Yes, you are what you eat. You can be a beautiful <laughs> flower. Um, rosemary, which we all love with different cheeses. I recommend tearing a little spear frond. I still don't know the exact term for oh, rosemary. Really? I should look that up. Um, and have it with a bite of cheese. And then finally some raspberries. Ooh. Raspberries. Rasp raspberries. Raspberries. <laughs> um, to balance everything out. Something really tart. So yeah. you've got sweet, you've got salty, you've got crunchy, you've got tart. You, uh, wow, we've got everything on this plate, and it's important that we have everything because one more time, cheers now with a full cheers. glass before I take my first sip of buttery Chardonnay. Going in. All right, let's get the reaction here. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so excited. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say I like this so much better than Rombauer, the king, yeah. right? The California king uh -huh. of Chardonnay. Sorry, Rombauer people. <laughs> and I know my sister loves Rombauer and that super, super like liquid butter uh -huh. um, flavor. This one's more crisp. I like it a lot. Tell yeah. us about this one. Well, so there's a lot of uh, Chardonnay is the, the grape. It, well, start, first of all, let's start with Chardonnay is so popular. It's probably the most most popular white grape in the world. I don't have the stats to back yeah. me up on that, mm -hmm. but that's, that's my guess. It is grown everywhere. It is very much um, associated with uh, with Burgundy, and uh, like Chablis, Chablis is a little place within Burgundy, and a lot of times those are Chardonnays. It's also connected with Champagne, so it's the it is the white grape that goes mm -hmm. into the Champagne blend. Oh, right. The other two are red grapes. Um, and of course it's grown in other places in France. It's grown in like Tuscany, you know, in, in central Italy. Yeah. Um, it's grown all up oh, yeah. and down. South America. S mm -hmm. South America, South Africa, yeah. Australia, right. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. All up and down the west coast from Washington to, to here in California. Yeah. And it's a, it, the grape itself is pretty neutral. The old world versions tend to be more like light to medium bodied minerally, whereas the the, the ones that come from hotter climates, like California, mm -hmm. are tend to be tropical in flavor. Um, we, we do, um, then there's a lot of malolactic fermentation, which is what gives it that real yes. butteriness. That makes you sound like a professor when you say <laughs> malolactic fermentation. But I guess my, my point with the Chardonnay is like, it really, it's, it's, a, it's a grape that can get a lot of complexity based on how it's made, and it does get aged a lot. So another thing that's really common with um, with Chard is is aging and not just aging but aging in oak. Oak, yeah. And so that's such a um, tradition, yeah. right? With Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so the oak and the aging is what brings out things like terroir, thing, you know, things like that. The woodiness, the um, you know, all of those flavors like vanilla and those flavors that are associated mm -hmm. with the oak. Um, oak is tricky though uh, because. Yeah. It could be a victim of the, the very process that, that you use to, to, <laughs> yes. to make the, the wine. So if you, if you over oak it, if you over age it, if you overdo it, they become sort of like what they call flabby and kind of broken. <laughs> I love the words, flabby. <laughs> <laughs> kind of broken down. I, I compare well, it to... Well, then you are what you drink. <laughs> yeah, very much. Ones. Very much so. You know, like, if you eat enough cheese, you'll be flabby. That's for sure. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> but the wines... I was gonna say, oh, I was going to compare it to, to aging because aging is a really important process in both cheese and wine. And the thing I always say about cheese or aging with, in regard to cheese is that it's what gives a cheese all of its complexity, all of its character. Mm -hmm. Well, the same is true of, yeah, of wines, nice. but um, one, thing that, one thing that you can do to, to cheeses during aging is you can smoke them. And I, that's what I compare oaking mm -hmm. too because yeah you get that wood woody well you that mm -hmm. you want to be careful of, of over oaking over, or yeah. over, over smoking. smoking yeah don't over oak don't over smoke yeah and mm -hmm. because the the idea the 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 winemaker the cheesemaker they want to express the grape they want they want the fruit to come out and so i think like uh, especially with like American for domestic winemakers, we think like bigger, better, you know, yeah. bolder, yeah. and then we overdo it on things. <laughs> and sometimes like less is more. Less is more <laughs> subtle. Subtle. Subtle is good. Is good. Um, yeah, I, that, that's so fascinating. I think I'm getting better at um, t distinguishing when I get the hint of oak. Mm -hmm. We've done so many of these now. This is our 16th mm -hmm. wine varietal. 
And now some of them really are distinctive with the oak. Chardonnay mm -hmm. mostly, I gotta say. Yeah. Um, but it's probably what because we can talk about that term. Once and for all, malolactic fermentation. You hear it all the time with Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, and easy way to think about it is that they ferment it twice. Mm -hmm. And the first time they do it, they have malic acids are present. And that's in all wines because of the tannins, the grape skins, everything has that malic acid. That's the apple the crispy, that feeling. But they want to tame that down when they make a Chardonnay. So my understanding, they ferment the wine again, and that brings out the lactic acids, which are the buttery, the creams. That's like lactic acid in cheese. Mm. It makes them creamy, dreamy. Um, that, so that's kind of taking that crazy term and um, making it simple. You know, the other thing, too, about Chardonnays is they really have a wide range of flavors, and they can be very, very bold flavor flavors. They also get described oftentimes as having a lot of texture. Yeah. Because you use chewy. the word creamy, mm -hmm. creamy. chewy, mm -hmm. but creamy is a word that gets described or that gets used a lot. Custardy. Custardy. For, that's for Chardonnays. True. Yeah, very right? much so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and, and so this, we opened the show by saying, <laughs> this pairs terribly with cheese. Oh, <laughs> Let's have some cheese. <laughs> but... One of the one of the, the problems that we've had with Chardonnay with cheese over the years is like cheese is is creamy, it is mm -hmm. buttery, mm -hmm. it is rich, and so oftentimes like too much of one thing, it, yeah. it feels like you're just biting into like eating a stick of butter or something. Yeah, and you think that you can never have too much, <laughs> but you can. But you sometimes can, I guess. Yeah. And so I, that buttery Chardonnay with a buttery cheese, it can be difficult. It can, yeah, it can be too mm -hmm. much. So sometimes we're just we're looking more for like a balance, and so we've. Uh, let's get into the first cheese. Yeah, I, I already did. Look. The Toma Provence. Toma Provence. Mm -hmm. And um, from California, as is this wine. I'm going to tell you a story about this wine in, mm. in a minute, but we had to have a bite of the cheese. Mm, yeah. We picked Toma Provence because um, it is creamy. It, you can see in the texture, mm -hmm. but it has herbs. So this is the number one thing, I think, if you're um, tasting Chardonnay with cheese and you kind of want it to work every time, Go with something with herbs in it. This has herbs de Provence, hence the name Toma yeah. Provence. Mm -hmm. Why the word? Why the name Toma? Toma. Well, so Toma is kind of a generic term, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's uh, it's a. There's a couple of origins, and people are actually argue about what what mm. it actually comes from. Um, so some some um, some books say that it it's cheeses that were used from skim milk. Um, okay. So, like the, mm. they would they would use. Like the the um, they they would scrape off the cream to make butter or or other things, mm -hmm. and then what was left, or they would use like the the whole cream for other things, and yeah. what was left was skim milk, and they would use that to make another batch of cheese. So that's that's one thought. Theory, yeah. The the other one is like they're they're shaped like little tomes. Yeah, a little <laughs> wheel, a tome, yeah. which we will get to the French tome, T O M M E, uh -huh. as opposed to this toma. Toma is just the mm -hmm. Italian. Spelling, you know, right? version of yeah. it. Yeah. Because isn't the, the family that makes this, because this is from Point Reyes Cheese, yeah. Point Reyes Station, Northern yeah. California. They're, they're Italian. Yeah, they're uh, they're on the maybe sec third, maybe generation yeah. now. Yeah. And I'm going to butcher their last name. Yeah, me too. But it's Gia Giacomini, I believe. Giacomini. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Giacomini. Giacomini. Sorry if you're watching. Giacomini. But... Giacomini. It's uh, Point Reyes <laughs> Farmstead. They're uh, really their big famous cheese, the one that put them on the map is Point Reyes Blue Cheese, mm -hmm. which is uh, still everywhere. They have another blue cheese called Bay Blue. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. um, but the Toma is yeah. is their ode to like the table cheeses of Northern Italy in, in France. Like So a Toma is thought of as, like I said, they make it from the leftover milk. Um, it's just like a, a very, I don't know, average looking little wheel, like, you know, a five pound wheel that um, that anybody can make natural rind, but they're thought of as table cheeses. Um, that's such a like it's like sad derogatory term. Like you feel like oh that's lower quality when it's just a table cheese. Yeah, but it's not. It's no, delicious. I, it's, I hate that term. You know. And you hear table wine too. Yeah, which can be good. They I can like be table. really good. Mm -hmm. Like I always talk about the 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 wines. You know, a lot of times when when you go to you find some little hole in the wall restaurant just. Any in in, in uh, anywhere in Italy or France, mm -hmm. and you order a glass of wine for for ten euro, and it's 
phenomenal or a bottle for really cheap and you're just like wow this is phenomenal um the, it's it's not about the the price they're they're easy drinking they're they're usually like medium body they're great with mm-hmm. with food but they're this is like the cheese equivalent or the the cheese uh, answer to that yes Exactly. I like it t- together. They're very mm-hmm. good. It made the wine to me a little more acidic. It's funny. Nice. You know, I don't know if some this got kind of um, effervescency bubbly when I had it with a bite of the, the Toma Provence. I could eat a bunch of that. <laughs> <laughs> if it was on the table right now, I would be cutting many, many more pieces because it's so good. Well, it's such a versatile mm-hmm. cheese. It's cow's milk, by the way. Mm-hmm. And they make, um, they make a few versions of this. So this one has the herbs de Provence. I'll read off the actual herbs in it. It's rosemary, basil, marjoram, savory, and wild thyme. So, so those are the herbs. They make one with a tomarashi spice. Oh my gosh, that one? Yeah. Which is really good. Indian style spices, mm-hmm. right? Tomarashi. And, uh, no, Japanese. Uh, Combination. Japanese. Yeah, it's I got think. some, I think, curries. <laughs> I don't know, it has a mixture. Tomarashi. It's yeah. good, whatever it uh-huh. is. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it would also be good with the Chardonnay. Yeah. I say. Oh yeah, yeah, I bet. I might be a convert. Okay, very good. For nice. this Ironstone. Can I tell you about Ironstone? Please. So this, everybody, uh, is not from Napa, so it's not the butteriest of Chardonnays. This one's from the Sierra Foothills, which is um, just outside of Sacramento. And, well, you're a Bay Area guy. Yeah. Okay, I'm a Sacramento gal. I lived there for, I don't know, eight years. And we would go wine tasting, Rob, in the Sierra Foothills. Now, can I tell you how much I really, really liked it? Because Napa's great. I mean, this is, you're, you're talking world-class wines, Napa Sonoma, right? But you go to those tastings and you're <laughs> forking out 30 bucks for a tasting, yeah. right? And it's, it's very, very different than going tasting in the Sierra Foothills. So if you're ever in Tahoe or Sacramento, make a day trip to the Sierra Foothills uh-huh. to go tasting. This is from a town of Murphy. Mm-hmm. Murphy's so, a tiny, I mean, it's just what you, the quintessential small town. Um, there's a delicious restaurant there. One is called Firestone or something. Here's Ironstone Wine. Isn't that coincidence? I have a funny story about wine tasting. There's limestone there. There's a lot of limestone. Limestone. Yeah. Okay. So, In Ironstone. A lot of stone. It's beautiful. It's our outside of Sacramento. You are doing excellent wine tasting. Rob. Okay. So we would do that. That was our weekend thing. And when we'd have guests in town, uh, we would go and say, let's go wine tasting and have a picnic up there because it's beautiful. It's close and do this. So guests in from Germany, Rob. Mm-hmm. And we're so want to impress them with our wines and let's go to wine tasting and I don't know there's two cars of us and we jump in we're trying to load everything in let's go wine tasting before Uber before <laughs> this was way before Uber um, oh my god we get up to the winery and we're just tasting away and having a great old time it's like oh it's we're hungry it's time for lunch where's lunch oh my god we're look, <laughs> looking at both cars nobody picked up the lunch. It, we got home, back home that day. Our lunches were sitting in baskets on the driveway. Oh Nobody bothered God. to take them. <laughs> it was a sad wine tasting day. Do so they sell food in Murphy's? Mm, they do, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. So we got home with our wines and um, had a picnic at there. But anyways. So I'm guessing there was cheese in those bag lunches. There was, but you know what? This was... BC. Uh-huh. This was Gina BC. This was Gina before BV. G- before BV. B- B- Gina BV. <laughs> Gina before Benissimo. Loved cheese, but I never had these cheeses. Uh, that would have been fabulous. Yeah. yeah. No, Murphy's, I looked on the map, because I mean, I'm a Bay Area guy, but I did did not make my way out that to the foothills of the Sierras very often. Um, but it was it's way out there like we would go we would take you know family trips to tahoe and there were some little towns around there like twain Hart and arnold do you know those towns oh yes it's yes, just yes, yes. yeah what a name <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's where it's uh, uh that's kind of where it, what it's next to was by it was by can you hold up real quick the mm-hmm. tome de provence again for Jean oh, yeah. out there Jean, the tome de provence it's bendy it's a little bendy and it's got the flex in it so that's Green. the way you're going to know the tome de provence it's Green got the herbs. flex. That's the herbs inside. Okay. Uh, herbs inside. Okay. Um, awesome. Perfect. Um, but yeah, this um, the family good. that that makes us. We took we we were up there years ago with yes. the staff. We we did mm-hmm. a, a tour of their of their facility, and they yeah. have um, they have the epitome of happy cows. Oh, sure. Paint the scene, Rob. If you've not been to Point Reyes Station, Tamales Bay. Mm-hmm. Tamales Bay. It's mm-hmm. these rolling hills. They're green, lush, beautiful. There's, um, you know, the you can. I think you can see the the ocean, or at least the bay, kind mm-hmm. of in, in the in the background. Um, the the cows are the Holstein, which are the huge black and white spotted ones. Huge. They're also called Friesian. I so we were in this. We we were like driving out of their windy little road to get out of their facility, and we saw that the cows are just 
munching on the side of the hill there, oh. and we just pulled over, and we just wanted to go take pictures. And <laughs> I remember... was a cow parazzi. <laughs> yeah. was like, oh, pictures of cows. Every... Oh, this angle. Yeah. This angle. So I like I kind of ran out there, and you got to yeah, get, I did. I got a selfie one. of me with a <laughs> with a cow. Yeah. <laughs> but they they are the uh, like the prototypical, almost cartoony looking black and white cows, and they're yeah. they are they are happy. Trust me, they're very very happy cows, uh, and that's everything that they make is cow's milk and uh, it's just one of the, the the better cheese producing places in the in the world that little section of um of the bay area um should we talk about the next yes cheese? the next cheese but can we do herbs really quick one more oh, time yeah. because we're talking about herbs oh, and sure, the reason yeah. i'd like everyone to compare if you have the chance if you've had the toma provence is herby try the pepper goat bite um this again was the pepper stuffed with a uh, fresh chev um, so this one happens to be from Spain. It's filled with similar herbs to mm. Herbes de Provence. But I think, again, the herbs with the Chardonnay, that's a way to go. Think of buttered veggies. Buttered, you love that? Yeah. The, the Pepago Pites are delicious mm. on their own, but with Chardonnay, mm -mm -mm. So good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So this gives a little bit of a kick. It's not spicy. No, not a spicy pepper. It's the perfect balance, and I, mm -hmm. I have a feeling this is going to go so well with that, mm -hmm. with that wine. Mm-hmm. I'll let you know. You said the the cheese is from Spain. Is it the Capricho Cabra? It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The the Capricho Cabra is one that we love to feature. And uh, is it good? It's so good. <laughs> now the wine was smooth. Yeah. The other one made it bubbly, a little more tangy. Yeah. This was smooth, smooth, smooth. Mm -hmm. The uh, so I, I I'm not surprised, and that that's it. It's a it seems like a nice balancing. Uh, yeah. Thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can go to the next tome. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a toma, now we're going to a tome. Tome, yeah, so this is the mm -hmm. French version, uh, the tome de Savoie. I was going to just say really quick about the Peppa Goat Bite. The cheese in that is called Capriccio Cabra, and it's a really young, herby goat cheese from Murcia, which is in a region in like southeastern Spain. But it's a cheese we, we usually have. It's a really young, mild, mm -hmm. and like really smooth mm -hmm. goat cheese. So good. You, on your salads, mm -hmm. on your finger. <laughs> on your finger, yeah. It's it perfect. <laughs> it's perfect for something like this if you have a, yeah. if you like to stuff, I mean, you could probably stuff Chicken. peppers, I mean, any, anything with anything. this. If, this yeah. is really good on, on eggs, it's like mm -hmm. an omelet. Mm -hmm. All right, the, the Tome de Savoie has a really, really crazy crusty rind, like a thick, thick <laughs> crusty rind. This looks like a, like a rhino skin as opposed it to does. dinosaur it shell. smells like leather <laughs> like a leather jacket that's been in your closet a long time uh, i don't know Tom de Savoie. this do, is do you get tobacco you know they, they get tobacco <laughs> and leather and tar <laughs> tar <laughs> this uh is an ancient cheese mm. it's been around forever it comes from the rhone alps and uh that that is um a, a region that is really rich with uh, with cheese making. And there's a lot of classics from there. Reblochon is probably the most famous one from there. Beaufort is also from there. Um, so this one is made with skim milk. That's what a, one of the things Again, it's known for. Again, interesting. So another tome. Um, and uh, always cow's milk. Uh, it's, I mean, it really is considered a table cheese. If you if you want, you can eat that rind. <laughs> that question uh, popped up. Can we eat the rind? I love the rind. Up to you. I, I love, love, love the rind. Mm -hmm. On almost all cheeses. There are a few that I, eh, on the rind, but I do love this one. I'm eating the rind. Uh -huh. yeah. It's natural. It's really just the dried, oh. crunchy edge. Of I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm here, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the dried, crunchy edge of the cheese. <laughs> as long as there's no like paper mm -hmm. wrapping on it, you're good. Yeah, exactly. But I like, this is old world, right to a T. And again, but isn't the word tom? Again, it, just for the shape of the cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so like two pounds, four yeah, pounds. Yeah, exactly. They're like two to five pounds. They mm -hmm. kind of they kind of vary, but they're just little. I don't even know what to say. It's, it just must be the most common kind of wheel of shape, shape yeah. for for cheeses. For I'm not yeah. talking about like your your really commercial type cheeses. I'm just talking about the, for the the regular average cheesemaker from town to town in Europe yes. makes this kind of basic shape. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. then that's what a, a tome is usually a tome. like There's your local tomes. table cheese, but. This is funny, Rob. So, Tome de Savoie, when first started in Ismo, which is now 17 years ago, I by no means knew everything about cheese. I just knew I loved cheese, mm -hmm. right? And back then, there weren't many cheese shops that I could visit to learn more um, without going to you know, Germany or whatever, Europe to find out. 
So I bought the book, that the one cheese book that really was out then was by <laughs> Steve Jenkins. And it was called The Cheese Primer. I was, I'm trying to look at right? it. It's on your shelf. I don't it see used it. to be on the shelf. It might be at one of the shops. Cheese Primer. It was the one book out there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to order, I'm going to start with his 50 top cheeses because mm-hmm. these must be good because he knows his cheese and that's what we'll order to get into the shop. So we started with 50 cheeses that day and Tom de Savoie was one of them. <laughs> and I remember I had some friends helping us unwrap the cheeses mm-hmm. and you know, for them, they're like, never had seen anything like this before. And it's like, you cannot possibly eat that. Like, that, <laughs> that cannot be good. It's like, oh, I, I think it's good. And sure enough, it's yeah. really mild. Yeah, It is really mild. It, it's, uh, I, I think this is a cheese that can, would be good with like the, the um, blackberry Ooh, walnut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to give mm-hmm. it a little something, like a little yeah. kick, a little bit of a... Or the rosemary, for yeah, sure. Yeah, something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna try that too? Yeah. Yeah, so good. But cheese with jam is great. Um, Carol loves it. Hey, Carol. And is it so good with the wine? Let me try again. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, excuse me, my mouth is full. <laughs> <laughs> we take a bite at the same time, of course. Oh, horrible host. <laughs> mm. I was gonna say, um, in re- regard to um, what were we were talking about, we were talking about oh the book yeah the, yeah oh yes the uh, cheese primer mm-hmm. Steve Jenkins he was a guy that worked at um, a, a famous New York deli called Dean and DeLuca that had a really good mm-hmm. specialty cheese section in the like eighties and maybe even seventies but they were uh, he was a pioneer they were a, really yeah mm-hmm. he was a pioneer and, and that was the first book I mean it seems a little outdated now when you mm-hmm. look at it but. It was. I love that book because uh, th- this is kind of the story of how I, I would go home every, every day after I clocked out from work, yeah. and I would pick a, a place. And I, I started studying by region, which is probably why I think so much of cheese is by region, by region. and place. Yeah. And it was because cheese book. There's a lot of cheese books that kind of they lay out their format differently, and he does it by by region. And so I just started with France and went through region by region. And um, even that the names of the of the regions have changed, and they yeah they, exactly since but mm-hmm. but they really he did a good job. You're right of education of the yeah the like origins this, of cheese. This yeah. is from Savoie, mm-hmm. which is a historic region, but that's not the name. The modern political region now is called the Rhone Alps. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, but Savoie is really connected to so much food history and cheese history, and uh, again, I went through and did. Italy and Spain and then the UK yeah, and then a great educational piece. I wish I had it here to show you, but the cheese primer gene that you asked by Steve Jenkins. It's yeah. still out there. Yeah, yeah. it really it. was the original, the cheese Bible, <laughs> whatever yeah. you want to call it, uh, back then. Because then I take, mm-hmm. I took that and I and I still use it to this day. Yeah. And then I sometimes I use more encyclopedic books and sometimes I, I look. Google. At, I, Have you heard of Google? Oh, Google. <laughs> Have you heard of GTS? Do you know what that stands no. for? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you do that every day? Yeah, I do. Roger asked me a question. How do you do that? I'm like, Google. GTS. <laughs> uh, Wikipedia, too. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so, so, yeah, some books are more set up like a narrative, you know, more like a, they're telling a story. Yeah, but uh, they all have their purpose, and I, yeah. I use them all for, for different mm-hmm. things. For research, filling your brain with cheese knowledge. I can't get enough. No, can't get enough. Can't I never get, get sick of it. <laughs> okay, the Tome de Savoie with the wine and the blackberry, I would swim in that. That's dinner. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm so, happy. Okay, Gumen. Okay, Gumen's weird. <laughs> you want to talk about Gumen? So I don't really know a whole heck of a lot about this one other than, it, than that it's aged for... Mm-hmm. Whoa, it smells so nutty. You guys, the Gumen, it's, so... It's for about a year, I yeah. know that. You've got two spears, you know, really sharp, mm. pointing, well, three. There's two, these two now on your plate. They're very similar. Mm. One is bendy and one is not. The Gumen is not, so that's what we're on to next. That one's really hard, um, so hold the bendy one. The bendy one it's more is also stinkier. But this is brittle and chalky mm. and everything. So Gumen, Rob, is Swiss. We're going into the Swiss style now. Typically, Chardonnays go very well with the Swiss Alpine-style yeah. cheeses. These are very cool. So, Gumen, Rob, um, there's a program that a lady, she's a Swiss lady, has implemented that's called Adopt an Alp, and it it's a way for her to bring cheeses from very, very small cheesemakers in the Swiss Alps to the States. And she just in, asks cheese shops all over the country to adopt an Alp. And we adopted Gumen, a couple other Alps this year, um, and have purchased some of the wheels of the cheese they make, and they make very few of them. We're talking a family of four. Mm-hmm. Might source cheeses from the, the six farmers that are in their Alp, 
and make cheese. And Gumen is one of them, and it's named after an Alp. That's the name of the region, and the Alp is Gumen. Um, oh my god, it definitely has the um, Swissy taste to it. It has like a nuttiness. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of Dang. like the age gives it a, a little bit of a bite, actually. Mm -hmm. It's so biting. It, it's got a bite, like a, even a slight bitterness to it, mm -hmm. which um, I wasn't expecting it to be that strong. Uh, it, so Gumen is is a, like Gina said a really tiny alp. It's really close to the town of Schwiz. If you know the oh no, I don't know Schwiz. Schwiz well, is next to Gumen. These are funny names. <laughs> <laughs> Schwiz is you're the, you could be the cheese cheese Schwiz. Cheese Schwiz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Schwiz is the name of like the the town, but also the name of the region, and it's a small region. Um, so they okay didn't know that and i was actually pulling like a, i was going i went on google maps and i was like looking 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 for the word guman and i couldn't find no, it anywhere no it's a on weird thing um but it's 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 there i mean it's they they um it looks to be a really traditional operation where um a lot of what they yes. a lot of times what they do with these alpine uh cheese makers is that um they'll they'll pull from their from shepherds or from mm -hmm. from um people who have the cows close by, and they'll mm -hmm. and they'll make the cheese. A lot of times they'll they'll blend the milk from a couple different. Sometimes mm -hmm. a couple different uh, herds or flinks, whatever the flinks. That's right. Whatever the word for that. lots of cows mm -hmm. are. In this case, it, I, I read that they had ninety Swiss brown cows. Ninety. Okay, they, so that's actually a good herd. Mm -hmm. But but I wonder if they shared that milk with with maybe some other folks. Mm -hmm. um, they make butter, ice cream, and yogurt. And but what they what I was thinking is or what this made me think about is. A lot of the cheesemakers in the region, and the, the, the cheesemaker who makes the Sharfa Max, which we're also going to taste, yeah. they join these con consortiums where they all, they, they make their own cheese, which is unique to that place, it's their cheese, but then they get together with their neighbors to market themselves, and they and that's where they form a consortium where they'll they'll all work together, and a lot of times they'll hire somebody or like a firm. Usually, it's one, like one guy. <laughs> <The> firm, <laughs> one guy, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but they'll they'll bring them all together and, and market them together as um, like this kind of like almost yes. like a brand. Exactly, which is cool because they can't do them on their own. Mm -hmm. they, no, they can't. Milking, They're focused. Yeah, you're busy milking the animals, making the cheese. Uh, this is an endless loop. And they do it the yeah. old school way, like the way yeah. that cheese was made a thousand years ago. Copper big kettles. copper vats, yeah. Remember our hike to Hochstadt? Yeah. We didn't get to see him in there making it, mm -hmm. but that teeny copper kettle, they're mm -hmm. making those huge wheels of cheese. <gasps> crazy oh, good and they don't yeah. have like the modern milk barns like i'm i'm no. telling you they're milking a lot of no. these animals by hand yes gallons mm -hmm. tubs and it's such hard work you guys mm -hmm. i can't we can't communicate it's a labor of love to be a cheese maker yeah in high in the Alps, and we have yeah. the we yeah. have the easy part. We're wussies. <laughs> we're, we're wussies. And like we're, yeah. <laughs> we just I'm talk about it. Like yeah. we, we sell it, you know, behind the counter in San Diego. But these these guys are doing the real hard hard labor. Yeah, people are loving the adopt an elk concept, and yeah. you know what it is. It's just to help the, that little uh, and then just connect with them. Mm -hmm. Someday I'd love to go visit Gumen, and then hey, you know, we have your cheese. We shared that at a Wino Wednesday with how, everybody. How um, many how many Alps have we adopted? So this year we adopted three Alps because mm -hmm. each shop adop adopted a different Alp. Mm -hmm. um, so we adopted three, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, to help them out. It's really good. Gumen, I can't even tell you. Brown, brown bald Alp, Fuedo, and what was the? Oh my gosh, <laughs> what was the other? Fuedo. I think you say Fuedo. It was a crazy Alp. Um, the other one? Yeah. I can't remember off it's my okay. head because I've had too much Chardonnay. No, it's okay. I, I had a, a, a thought. Do you want to hear it? It's kind yeah. of random though. <laughs> what if we adopted an Alp? Do you remember Alf? Wasn't that that brown <clears throat> alien life form? Alf. That, it, stand, it, stand, it, stand, it stood for alien life form. He was hey, Alf. He had like the voice. He was okay. okay. <clears throat> no more sparkly water. <laughs> <laughs> this is vodka, Gina. <laughs> okay, and I okay. So we're gonna have a discussion about the pairing. And Jason, I agree. This is not my favorite pairing. So I have tried. Boom, it's this is too biting for this. That's kind of what I was. Yeah, about. isn't it funny? Um, but, Jason, again, I think the blackberry jam mm -hmm. makes everything better on this one. I tried it with a rosemary frond, and that was delicious, too. Um, but I really liked it with the blackberry, Jason. I'm, uh, and I'll try that with the... I'm going to do it with a pear now. Try it with a fresh fruit. Uh, I did with a raspberry, but uh, it's too tart. This is biting, and I'm so is the raspberry. The you know why I'm saying raspberry? Why? Vale, Colorado. 
very beautiful place, uh, very shishi. I went into a coffee shop one morning and uh, I pointed at a scone and I said, what's that one? And the man behind the counter said, it's Rawlsbury. <laughs> and I was like, excuse me? And he says, Rawlsbury. I was like, raspberry? <laughs> and he looked at me like, yes, raspberry. <laughs> with such disdain that now I just have to call it a raw <laughs> so sh He shamed you into it. Okay. He shamed me. It and worked. this was like 15 years, 20 years ago. Sure no, did work, huh? Not that long, because <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> so well, we're, yeah, definitely better with jam. No, I had the, huh? the Goomba. You're showing your age, Robbie G. What? Oh, Alf? <laughs> yes. Yay, George. Thanks for calling him out. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely the 80s. I know that. Probably like 87, 88, 89 around there. Do you remember this show? I just, it's a brown, he was like a, not a cartoon, but a stuffed animal. Yeah, he was like, it was so know. stupid. <laughs> I didn't watch Elf, but I can picture Elf. Yeah, yeah. and the dad on Elf, and the other you know, Yeah, George, family. Rob's way older than I am, so just so you know, he is showing his age, yeah. You know, I, I, I am young at heart. But okay. oh, uh, cool. I have to say, I tried the, Wait. the Goomin. With the with the um, blackberry, blackberry and it was not good. I did not like you it. You didn't like it, but the gumen with the pear is delicious. Okay, so I need something jam. a little sweeter. I think. Yeah. Oh, then you have to do the jam. But I think the pear was good, but the jam was the best. The jam is the jam. That's why it's called mm. We Love Jam, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've got mostly rind on this on this bite. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's good. Mm. I like Gumen is very odd. I, I will have to tell the cheesemaker if we ever meet them. I don't know. It's but it's biting. Is that a compliment if we say, "Hey, your cheese is <laughs> your odd. cheese is odd"? <laughs> I'm not sure when I. You know what I would do this with? I'm gonna say, I would uh, like a pecorino over pasta yeah. or something. I think it would be really, really mm -hmm. yummy that way. On its own, I feel that it needs something else just because it is biting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's. Um, I get the. Mm -hmm. I, I did another event before this, and we did Emmental. Which is like mm -hmm. the, so nutty. Um, bite a bite. Yeah. Just it has like that. I don't know. I'm gonna say Swissy flavor, but you guys know what I'm talking about. That really Swissy flavor. Um, this has that Emmental Swissy flavor, but just way more texture and way more bite. It's yeah, just like for sure. It's on. It's like Swissy Emmental on steroids. All That's right, what I'm call Professor, it. put this in your brain. <laughs> you brought it up. Don't okay. don't yell here. Oh, is, it elf, is this <laughs> an Alf question? No, it's an Alf. Oh, not Alf. Alf, not Al. <laughs> um, debuted in 86 through 90, so four years did ago. Did I say 87 through 89-ish? He did. <laughs> you got to give Rob some credit, but now you know 86 through 90. Next time you now reference Elf, put it in your history. You know what? He probably gts that. Did you GTS that, <laughs> George? Tell us. Um, <laughs> or no, did you? It, that's not the right course. way. Yeah. Did you GTS? Sorry. <laughs> now you're calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to be self-conscious about that, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said it wrong. <gasps> well, does George remember Alf? Like you must, right? I don't. I don't know. I'm not going to ever say how old anyone is. So maybe George is like 20. And <laughs> it's like Alf. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know I went back and watched like. Uh, remember, I was referencing um, buckwheat or something on the last one. Oh my gosh! From uh, Little um, Little Rascals. Oh my god! Three Stooges. Of buckwheat, I watched. Um, Eddie Murphy buckwheat. Yeah, 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 Three Stooges. How old are you? Well, there's. Well, you look really good if you're th referencing. Three Eddie Stooges. Murphy buckwheat was was referencing Little Rascal buckwheat. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we digress. Anyway. We digress. Yeah. yeah. There's like, what are you talking? I thought this was about cheese. Okay. Let's get back yeah. to cheese. Back to cheese. So we gotta go now to the other Swissy. Sharfa. Sharfa. So we did the Goomin, the hard crunchy one. Sharfa is wibbly. Yeah. yeah. And and, and what that means, that texture. Basically means yeah. that the cheese is younger. Yeah. So this is this is going to be, I, I think it's six months ish. They kind of vary, and it's it's hard to know exactly yeah. what the ages of the cheeses that we get because they, they play around. It's all trial and error. Um, but this looks like it's about six months. The the Sharfa Max, the name means sharp, sharp to the max. Basically, it's extra sharp, and uh, it it's it's from a region called Turgau in Switzerland, Turgau. which is a really really big region for producing cheeses. A lot of really classic traditional cheeses. They um, they fall under one of those systems, just like the French fall and the Italians fall under systems where they have to make cheese a certain ways and they have to use certain type of milk and they have to use certain techniques for it to, them to take on certain names. Um, so just like champagne has to come from champagne and be those those um, specific grapes. Yeah. This was um, this was based on a cheese called Appenzell mm -hmm. or Appenzeller, which, which is I a love awesome cheese. Mm -hmm. 
Appenzell, um, some of you may recognize that name because it's such a classic, but it's kind of up there with Gruyere and with Emmental as the most traditional traditional. They've got the holes, yeah. everything. So the, um, the, the system in Switzerland had broken down in this region for a little bit and they were able to make other cheeses. And this was like this cheese maker, they're called the Studer family. This was their spin on Appenzeller. So it's like a funkier, stinkier version it of is. Appenzeller. It is. My fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now I'm going to rub it in the rosemary because it's a stinker, but I love it yeah. on its own. I'm not sure with the Chardonnay again. So this whole pairing um, Chardonnay with Alpines, these two have not been my favorite to pair. Hmm. And I'm going back to the other two, but now I'm going to do Sharpa Max with a bit of the rosemary. And, and see if it changes my mind. What do you, I don't know, Rob. I, well, I'm gonna you say like this. the Chardonnay Max, anyway. I do, but I'm going to say this: these both of these Alpines that we're doing today are, if like if, if medium is like a five for for Alpines, these are like at nine or ten level. I these agree. are really strong Alpines. Yeah, they definitely are. So we don't turn anybody off from Alpines. If you think these are so weird, mm -hmm. we have a friend. She's like, I hate Swiss Alpine cheeses. Mm -hmm. But I gave her like Hollerhocker, Appenzeller, and so loves those. Yeah. But these might be the same. She'd go, mm, I'm not so fun. These, this is more like this Charfamax, it to me is more oh my God, like so a wash rind. Is your finger? Yeah, I, I, I can't escape it. I need more rosemary. <laughs> the, uh, do you hear, dip your fingers no. in, in the jam. <laughs> Charfamax is like a wash rind cheese. It, it's, it's more similar to a wash rind cheese, which are the Limburgers, the Epoise. The monsters, they um, and, yeah, the stinkers. Yeah, and they even do wash this cheese. I mean, you can tell by the color on the rind, and there's a little crustiness on this rind too. Mm -hmm. But it's got that kind of pinkish. It's a bacteria growth, which I know that sounds gross too, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's totally edible. And uh, in this case, they just brine it. They just give it a wash with yeah. brine, salt um, water, salt water. Mm -hmm. And uh, my guess is that they literally take a brush and just and just dip the brush in the in the salt water. Maybe it may be a rag. I'm not sure, um, but uh, it encourages that that growth of the crusty rind, but also that aroma. Yeah, it whenever really you, yeah. pronounced. Whenever you see that pinkish reddish rind, mm -hmm. and if it's kind of soft and tacky, sticky, mm -hmm. that's a washed rind. And it could be like Rob said, uh, salt water. It could be beer. Mm -hmm. It could be wine. What other things have people done in their washes with? Whey, a gin, spirits. We know, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, spirits, yeah. Beer, wine. Any moisture, right? Liqueurs. Uh -huh. I mean, Epoise, balsamic. Balsamic. Mm -hmm. The one I was Epoise, which I mentioned, is from Burgundy in France, and they use a, they use like a brandy or something, right? A Merc, or a Mark. Mark, which is a liqueur. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So a question, um, Jason, uh, Cabernet is hard to pair with cheese and wine. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the two whys. Chardonnay we talked about, it's butter on butter, makes pairing really difficult. Or if they're really oaky, then that can just dominate too. It's yeah. like having a super smoky cheese. Exactly. Like you it can't pair that. Yeah. You can't pair it. It just suddenly everything else is done. Or let me let me mm -hmm. break in that really quick again. If you have a really, if you have a smoky cheese, they wouldn't go on a plate where we're pairing. That yeah. It might be fun on a pizza or something if you're just having that on its own with like one other thing. Yeah. But go ahead. You're getting all highfalutin now. <laughs> kind of smoky cheese. Yeah, sorry, smoky you can do cheese. whatever you want. That was the first thing I said. Do whatever you want. Right. <laughs> just saying. Please Cabernet have... Sauvignon, Jason. Cabernets are so tend to be so bold and tannic uh -huh. that just like Rob said, they overtake the cheese. Uh, that makes them difficult to pair. And when, when we do a Cabernet, we have a Cabernet coming on the schedule soon. Yeah. Um, you can see you need bold cheeses to stand up to the bold Cabernet. Otherwise, the cheese just gets lost, mm -hmm. which makes Cabernet quite difficult to pair. And the texture can just get can get tricky because, as Gina said, they they can be very tannic. They can just be kind of chewy, mm -hmm. and um, they they tend for whatever reason. There's they can be great. You can have great cab pairings, but for whatever reason, it, it's you can have really bad ones. Like it, mm -hmm. it, I feel like there are some of the table wines we talk about, like the the Pinots and the the, the Sauvs and the the Chianti type wines. They're like jam. They're just fun. They, they're good with everything. They're versatile. Mm -hmm. You can't screw it up. Cab is just one that sometimes if you pair a cab with a with a blue. It'll, they'll both yeah. taste great individually, but then when you put them together, they become bitter for whatever reason. I think it's just yeah. like they, the some, bitterness comes out from the tannins. They maybe? can clash, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Yeah. It's just, um, it's not that you can't find great pairings. I just find that it's harder to. Yes, which we will share the favorite cab pairings. It's like I with them. Um, do you? Mm -hmm. I, there's, there's a few directions you can go. Maybe we can save it, but like you, yeah. we would probably be, you would probably see some aged cheeses, you know, to match up with, with that strength because that's another, you know, very general guideline we think about is like light with light, big with big. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so the aged. Sense. Aged mm -hmm. goudas, um, yeah. you know, we, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, George liked the Sharpa Max with the dried pear here. Ooh, I'll, have I'll to try, try that, that too. George. I like it with the nut. Mm. With the pear, I like it. Ooh, that's different. That's like a warm bread loaf. I can't even describe what I'm tasting there. Mm. Mm hmm. This is what's fun. I'm, I'm trying it with everything. I tried it with the rosemary. Loved the Sharpa Max with the rosemary. Loved it with the jam. Everything with the jam is going to be good. This is goes without saying. What mm. do you think? Do you try it with the pear? It's good. It's mm -hmm. um, that was good. Like the bread loaf thing was good. It's um, it's like the, I don't know, fresh baked bread. The cheese Yeasty. gives a layer of depth that is, mm -hmm. I think, needed. You sound like well, a label, <laughs> <laughs> a wine label, a layer of depth. <laughs> so I'm just a I'm just a BSer, Gina. That's all. <laughs> is that what? Okay. I'm <laughs> All good. All right, Rob, so we've gone through a lots of these. Now we're down to the, we're going to Washington State now, right? Washington State. Washington State. Because I don't believe they make this in New York. I believe this is all made in Washington State. This flagship. particular cheese. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the cheese maker is called Beechers. B-E-E-C-H-E-R-S. Yes, Beechers. Beechers. Started in Seattle. Yeah, and they when started. we say Seattle, Pike Market, Seattle. Wow. Oh. Super cool location. Mm -hmm. You've been there, right? Mm -hmm. Pike. Okay, Pike Market, everybody. Everybody knows if you've been to Seattle, have been to Pike Market. Beechers took over a space literally at the hub of Pike Market where the pig is. You can rub the pig and get good luck. Um, there is there is Beechers, and they are an urban cheesemaker. They were kind of the first. Yeah. Do you know anyone that made urban cheese before Beechers? No. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think they started the trend. They're in Seattle. Rob, you've been there. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I got to make cheese there. I had to get there at 4 a.m. <laughs> 4 a.m. That's ridiculous. And I was on the Vespa because that was the kickoff of the, my big Vespa ride from Seattle to here, starting at Beechers. Okay, 4 a.m. It started with, I parked my, you know, Seattle's got the hills. Uh -huh. They're steep hills. I parked the Vespa on a hill. I put the kickstand up and almost tipped over this way. That would have been the start <laughs> of the tour. It did not, so I was okay. But I, I got there at 4 a.m. to find that the, the milk trucks come overnight. This is how hard work cheese making is, everybody. The milk trucks show up at about 4 a.m. to pump the milk into the building. Mm -hmm. They just had a, literally kind of a little vent mm -hmm. on the side of the building where the milk could come in and get pumped into the pasteurizer to start making the cheese. Mm -hmm. 4 a.m. every day, it doesn't stop. Crazy, right? They, um, so I know when I, I just visited the one up in Seattle and I remember, oh, yeah. I mean, Pike's Place, you guys, that's the, where the original Starbucks is. Yes, the it's, Three Doors Down, the original Starbucks is next to the original Beechers. That's a band that's name, true. I believe. Three Doors Down. Three Doors Down. Is that, that's probably why. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Starbucks they, they worked at three Starbucks. Three Doors Down from that's, they, that's the, why they're called Three Doors Down. <laughs> it could be. We should write this down. <laughs> but a uh, couple funny, or I guess tidbits about Beechers. And flagship. Oh, yeah. So it's this really dry one. Virginia. It's kind of darker yeah. mm -hmm. color, almost a orangey-ish yep. tint. Um, they there is they make a great mac and cheese and, oh. and um, Oprah got behind their mac and cheese yes. and that just exploded. I remember that was I see it everywhere. I mean it's at the airport up there in um, SeaTac. Yes, they I stop a, there every time. Yeah, I don't care. I'm landing. I'm going. I'm <laughs> departing or landing. I am I'm getting pictures of mac and cheese. They they have um, the other thing that's cool in that market is they have the fish tossing. Yes, and that's and so, so fun the fish tossing. Yeah, I've I've actually caught fish. Did you there. catch a fish? Well, my mom like stopped, like made that. I was so, so you can say you caught a fish. Yeah, so it was this thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it like slapped against my face, and then I caught it. That was such like a, a cool thing. That whole market is. It really was really cool. Yeah. Um, they have another location in uh, New York. New York City. In Imagine Midtown. this. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Union, near Union Square. Yeah, and it's right across from that really cool bookstore that I can't remember the name of, but uh -huh. it's... Um, I knew it was close to Italy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and mm-hmm. so I, I did the same thing that Gina did in Seattle. I, went, I made cheese with them yeah, in yeah. New York. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, same thing. They told me, you know, show up whenever. I, I, I don't think it was 4 a.m., but I got there pretty early. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I made cheese with them. And they have a huge window. And so all the businessmen walking, walking by with their man purses, you know, are, like, looking in and, and watching oh, us yeah. make cheese right there in the heart of the city. And when you make this, so this is a cheddar cheese, right? Oh, this so is a cheddar-style mm. cheese based on the classic English cheddars. But it's... Um, of course made here in the United States when you make cheddar there it goes through a process that's actually called cheddaring and that's where they stack these huge curds on top of each other they're these huge slabs they're like maybe like this thick and this long but it's I mean it's dense cheese I mean it's it's yeah it's like you know how heavy um, liquid is like imagine you know carrying that much water that's really really heavy so that I mean, these curds, you have to flip them over and mm-hmm. stack them, and then you cut them and mill them, and it goes through the whole process so right work. there in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. My back was killing me, and I was like, you know, how old were you? Yeah, I was younger, man. Then I was in my twenties. <laughs> and oh God, how? So, no, I'm calling you on that. <laughs> so the, um, but I remember too. I mean, it was for work. So <clears throat> for Venissimo work, I wasn't working for them, and uh, but they felt so bad. And because um, I, I basically just said, hey, can I come and just like intern for you for a day and take yes. a bunch of photos and you don't have to pay me. I just want no. to get some mm-hmm. content for, mm-hmm. for our, our cheese school in San Diego. Oh, of course. Don't worry about it. So they fed me in mac and cheese afterwards. It's awesome. Like a fat <laughs> so, of mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like in this like fan because they have a, like a little fancy restaurant part of it. So Did I, you sit back there? Yeah. Like, oh no, I, I sat in the restaurant part and I was all yeah. sweaty and like red faced. <laughs> like, just eating mac and cheese. Yeah. Like, well, Rob, I earned this. Taste this yet? No, I want that oh. piece. You shouldn't eat it. It's horrible. I took a little tiny bite. You shouldn't. It's awful. Mm. It's not awful. It's delicious. <laughs> and I love it with the wine. It's just mm. perfect together. But this, the crunchiness of it, just smelling it, it's like a caramely. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Yeah, I Probably. love the texture. This is an age. This is an age piece. Some this of them are not so aged. Two this years is, or so. This might be a two year old piece of cheese. Two years old. Yeah. This is a yeah. as close as English cheddar as you're mm-hmm. going to get. Love it. Comes cloth bound, mm-hmm. li- literally la- wrapped in cheesecloth when you hear that term. And they age it, so they don't mm, have so traditional good. caves, mm-hmm. but South Seattle, kind of where Starbucks headquarters is, the old Rainier Brewery. They have created caves, mm-hmm. kind of just in the industrial part of Seattle, mm-hmm. that they age these cheeses in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And almost like in Parma, and you see the big, you've already seen pictures of the big wheels of Parma in these big rooms. Same thing with Flagship Reserve. Yeah. They had a, re- in New York, they, they were attempting to open a restaurant. They, I, don't, I don't think it made it, but they were aging cheeses in the wall of the restaurant. In that, the same facility? Yeah, it was like Downstairs. down below, exactly. Yeah. And so they had the cheeses aging in there. It, I don't think it worked out. So um, they they have an aging room, and like as Gina said, yeah. they they create rooms that are meant to basically copy the conditions of a of a cave. Yeah. Temperature, humidity, whatever conditions the cheese needs to age and age age perfectly. Um, you you talked about in Seattle because it's urban. I mean, it's Pike's Place. Mm-hmm. How they they truck the the milk in yeah. in the morning. Animals are milked twice a day, so you get mm-hmm. a, usually a couple batches of milk. Um, what they did in New York was they had the same kind of system. They would it would just come in, you know, they would attach the Crazy. tube to the to their yeah, to the big, building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it went right into their big tanks, and then, but the truck before it left, they loaded the truck up with all of the whey oh. from the day before. So the whey is, I mean, it's it's like. What they do is um, che- milk turns into curds and whey. The cheesemaker uses the curd. The the whey, the first batch of whey, mm-hmm. is very very full of it's it's very nutrient rich. Um, there's tons of calcium, protein, mm-hmm. all kinds of good stuff. For for most traditional cheesemakers, they'll use that whey for something. Ricotta. They'll recook it to make mm-hmm. ricotta. That's what ricotta means. Recook. Um, they will make. They can make um, um, like. Mizithra. Oh, yeah, Greece. that's true. Mm-hmm. They will feed it to pigs in Parma. Yeah. So they so always do something with it. In Austria, they make soaps and lotions and stuff. Yeah. The way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so um, when you and then when you when you use the way again, 
the, what's left is almost just water, but it's almost like this like green colored water. It, it's like kind of weird looking double double yeah, way. Yeah, it's a yellowy green, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they do in New York though is they they can't really do anything with the way, and they're not allowed to dump it. In although the rats would probably love it in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Feed the rats campaign. <laughs> Feed them um, away. <laughs> so they load up the truck before it leaves, and then it, they bring it back out to the farm. And in New York, they they get they it comes from upstate somewhere. I'm sure it's a couple hours. Hudson Valley, out of the maybe. City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. So Seattle, I don't know if it changed, but of all things, because Seattle's so green, mm -hmm. of a, they just let the way go down the drain, which was fascinating to me because mm -hmm. most places will capture it somehow, mm -hmm. even. Um, She's maker here, like uh, Alesmith is making the curds. Mm -hmm. They capture that way and then they dump it for feed, just yeah. like in Italy. Uh, it goes into the feed stock for the Conan dairies. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sending that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of um, like trade and, and uh, just this, this theme of nothing going to waste. To waste, ever. yeah. Ever, ever, ever. So um, George brought up a good point, Rob. I mean, so this is aged two years, but aging doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean sharp. So this no. is not a sharp cheddar by any means. It's a crunchy cheddar, but it's not sharp. Yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. And and what we sh I should say about that mm -hmm. is there's really two, fan there's two types of cheddar. You have the really traditional ones, which are they're aged, uh, I would say a maximum of two years, mm -hmm. like this guy. Yeah. They they're bandage wrapped, and if they go beyond two years. They get, um, they just get too dried yeah. out and kind of crumbly. This would get dried. Mm -hmm. You have also like the more factory style production of cheddars. When they age the factory cheddars, they can age up to 20, 30 years. Yeah. But they they cry they wrap they they cryo back them basically. Yes, it's so crazy. Remember that story? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was I'm still floored to this day that that is how that cheese is made so they're they're those really really sharp cheddars which are which are to be honest like they get a little bit of criticism for being one-dimensional mm -hmm. that That's are true. really really aged really it's sharp ones right those, in your face yeah mm -hmm. those those get aged usually wrapped in in plastic so there's no and there's debate as to whether or not that is really aging it is well you're getting older I think it, it's I getting think older it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, then um, I'm not aging either. I'm cloth bound. I'm going to cloth bound myself. But it's what happens with that when you do it that way, you're protecting it from like from drying oh. out or from like the outside. I'm going to cry back myself. <laughs> <laughs> Did Michael Jackson have something like that? Like yes. A, a machine oh, that he. I can't decide. <laughs> um, but uh, so you have like the really the really traditional type of cheddars. They don't get super sharp yeah. like like those. Um, you know, like the Tillamooks or things like that, or the Hooks. Which are delicious. Cheddars. Tillamooks, Hooks. There's, there's some good cheddars. Sharp. Just different style of mm -hmm. cheddar, really aging. Because the cheddaring process is the same. It's really mm -hmm. it's really what happens after the afterwards. cheese is yeah. formed. It's the last step in the process. But you can compare cheddars to Chardonnays. There's Chardonnays that are yeah. crisp. There's Chardonnays yeah. that are buttery, double fermented, double aged. Yeah. Um, kind of go hand in hand. I'm loving the flagship with the, the market. To, together, they're the perfect little bite. Mm -hmm. Good to know. I didn't even need blackberry jam. I didn't need any of it. Yeah. I ate it with all the other stuff. It's awesome with the rosemary. I did not try it with the blackberry. You should try that. I will. Um, but yeah, cheddar is fascinating. So today I learned, Rob, About the Alp? pairing of the Alps with the Chardonnay, I'm not digging. I don't know if these two just didn't do it for me, but the cheddar with it and the herbs are still, I'm sticking with, with my Chardonnay, with the buttery Chardonnay. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I think we picked the wrong Alpine cheeses. Uh, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're still delicious, but mm -hmm. maybe just not the, the greatest pairing yeah. mm -hmm. with the, with the yeah. cheese. And again, some people maybe like it. I mean, you don't know. Yeah. And I and I also just back to cheddar. Cheddar is really is truly one of the best cheeses in the world, and it gets a bad rap because yeah. of block, you know, American cheese. Cheddar, yeah. Because of it cheddar, kind of yeah. It. Like I, people will say, oh, you know, I'm looking for some cheeses, but no, no cheddars. I don't want any of that basic stuff. Well, cheddars, cheddars like this is a, this is it's a really, fantastic and yeah. really complex and nuanced. Cheddar, cheese. Gouda, and Brie, those categories kind of get poo-pooed, but they yeah. all have great cheeses in those categories. They also have bad cheeses in those they categories. Do. But there's <laughs> wines in the family. <laughs> right. That are good. And there's wines that are bad. Yeah, absolutely. There That's are, why we do this. And why we do, just to see you. And again, 
I'm not going to stop eating these. <laughs> I've got all kinds of little bits right here. You in do, front of me. which I'm know. shocked because usually at Rob. <laughs> out eats me, but today, uh, uh-uh, uh, not happening. Well, you know, yeah, the night is young. But Rob, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Chardonnay a second chance. Well, and when my sisters who love Chardonnay come, and my sister-in-law, they love Chardonnay. When they come over with Chardonnay, I won't like turn up my nose or anything. <laughs> I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna bring it on. Okay. Such a wine snob. Super wine snob. How did this happen to me? <laughs> Why can't you just go with anything and just roll with it? Mm-hmm. Well, that makes me feel good. I'm happy for Chardonnay that Chardonnay has worked its way back into your <laughs> into good the graces. repertoire. <laughs> I'm not because I don't need any more into my repertoire. It's full as it is. But we have a new Rob Jean. Huh. Hello, Jean. Jean. Um, she's just getting started. She wants another. What's where's the after party? <laughs> one day we're gonna have an after party, and you know what we're gonna have one day, Rob? Huh. We've talked about this. When oh. things get to, I God, if I hear the word normal again, but I, when things get back to normal, honestly, we're having a party with everyone who has participated in all this. Yeah. This is a free, this is a get together. We're just having a cheese feast. We're going to call together. them the virtual in person party. <laughs> <laughs> At like virtual in person. Del Mar, because we got space in Del Mar. We have now. a space, we have a patio there. We're going to have a cheese bar open, and everyone who's participated in all this, I'm not going to say the word, all of this. <laughs> When we can, we will, and you're all invited, and we will have an after party, Gene, then. We're gonna have a big party then with every cheese you can imagine, every wine you can imagine, and right? Gene, we have if we have a ton of classes on YouTube that we, I think, right, that are up there that we've already done. And then what's coming up next, Gina? Oh my gosh, what's next? Talk for a minute um, because I have to Let look. me think. What was I know. The next? Well, I know we're doing cab at some point. Is that next? And we usually switch off white, I didn't look. red, white, we red. We do because yes, we want to be equal so, opportunity drinkers. So two weeks from today is a is the next Wino Wednesday. Before that, though, we are having the divas. That's our that's Chef Sarah and the staff from Del Mar, um, who are doing a cooking class on they a are. Sunday. They are a cooking class, and this one is three courses. Not Valentine. It's called Galentine's because the divas are gal, so they're doing a Galentine's dinner. I thought that was like the name of a French dessert or something, like a gal- gal- galantine. A galette. They, <laughs> well, a galette. Maybe Nate will do that in one of his cooking things. This is a galette. A galantine, Rob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yes, that is coming up, the Galentine's. But our next Wino Wednesday on February 10th, Barbera. Ooh, fun. Which is good because Nebbiolo we did. Uh-huh. Uh, Italian wines uh, still flummox me, mm-hmm. kind of like Chardonnays. I'm trying to learn more about Italian wines. I know I love the Frenchies. Mm-hmm. I know which Californians I love, but the Italians I really want to learn more of. So we're doing Barbera. And because it's right before um, Valentine's, which is decadence, that really should just be a day of decadence, yeah. right? Truffles, of course. chocolate, champagne. Um, we're going to do Hunter Barbera and a dark chocolate. We're going to be Ooh. mixing a lot of chocolate into the pairing with the Barberas. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is called Truffle Hunter, the wine. Fabulous. I can tell you that right now. Nice. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. That just made me think, too, when Jason was asking about cabs and what pairs, dark chocolate is another good one for, for yes. the big cab. If you're going to do big cab, do dark chocolate. Like 70% plus dark yeah. chocolate. Um, well, fun. Everyone here is looking forward to that party, Rob. I can't <laughs> tell you when. The, I don't know when this party will be. Probably the fall, if everything goes as planned. It seems, it seems like that. The fall might could be happen. the time. We'll have a, a no oh, problem. You know what we'll but, do huh, at that party too? Huh. Reclet. So huh. not only will we have cheese. Make sure you bites. hold her to her word on all of these things. You hear it right here, right now. Make notes. <laughs> it's on record. <laughs> it's on record. We're doing reclet. <laughs> we're doing wine, and we're doing cheese. <laughs> Yes, and a big party for all because thank you it. for the support. You all know who you are. Um, we, yeah, every everything's pointing to that direction, and I, I just keep saying every day brings us closer. Yeah, so and we're and you know we were just before this talking about our Veni voyages and when mm-hmm. you know we're we're just so ready to get back into traveling and yeah. and it's just going to be that much sweeter when when we get all when we get to do so it too. and yeah. you know as i think about it i really do think that that we're all going to appreciate these things so much more a little more and, and great as that'd be the bone upside of it all and one thing we can also do is like we can think about we used to do like day trips or even weekend trip maybe three day trips up to paso or mm-hmm. um you know, the Bay Area or something. To, so maybe we can think of like some activities that yeah. are um, where we just rent a bus and just you know, just go, just go somewhere. 
Vespas. Vespa trip, bicycles, who knows? Even Anything. something local. Bicycle you know? ride. Yeah. A local farm or do like a brewery mm-hmm. tour or something. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Something. Can we be self shameless promotion? Yes. Alps. <laughs> Rob, Alps. I, September, Alps tour. I think we're going to do it. Uh, well, we're going to keep it. And music and dancing. Yes, Gene. <laughs> we'll be doing music and dancing. Well, the, Gene is uh, referring to we, were, we mm-hmm. had our trip to the Alps that was planned for 2020. It was going to start and end in Munich for Oktoberfest. Mm-hmm. And uh, when everything was canceled, we had to <clears throat> we had to push it into 2021. So we're, we're actually still we're still planning on it. I mean, we haven't I canceled this happen. year yet. I'm, I'm in contact with my German relatives. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, what do you hear about Oktoberfest? What yeah. do you hear about Oktoberfest? Because I feel that if that goes on, then everything else, this is the thing. You, you, you want to go and have the full experience yeah. of what that's that like country the, is, what it is, right? So if that's happening, everything else is happening. <laughs> that's the, what do they call that? The litmus test? The litmus test. Yeah, <laughs> Oktoberfest that, is our litmus test. That's what yeah. we're kind of waiting mm-hmm. on, so... Um. Yeah, we got a lot of people in on the trips, and in and you. This would be a good group. Like we could just do this oh group gosh. right here. I'm, I'm Can we just make a pack? Like you know, you know, you stack your hands and do the yes, we're in. <laughs> yeah. If we're all in, go like this <laughs> because we're in. <laughs> Another reference from the '80s. Remember they went. Stop. Whoa, Bundies! The Bundies on Married with Children. I love the Bundies. Let's do a Bundies episode. What, what Bundies would the cheese have on their what? What, the, <laughs> what cheeses would the Bundies have on their plate? Take this away. Oh, boy. No more Chardonnay for Gene. No more Chardonnay. Thank you all. I'm going to end on that note. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you Hope so much. Hope to see you again. Enjoy your cheese. Enjoy your wine. And just enjoy. Be happy. Enjoy life. Be happy. Mwah. What was that song? Was another Don't worry. Be right? happy. Don't worry. Bobby McFerrin. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. Bye. People loved that.